Dale Arnes, what's going on, Mike Boards with the Mike Boards channel. Thank you for watching. We're talking boats today. We've got an Alpha One Gen One Outdrive engine, and we are going to compare old versus new when it comes to bellows. We're basically going to show you how bellows fail and create leaks. That's not what you want. Let's take a look. DIYers, here we are at the Craftsman Workstation, and we have been busy on the left-hand side. You can see an Outdrive. We have fully rebuilt that top to bottom, everything in between, and we are working on the bell housing, transom, gimbal ring, all the parts. And here's a bunch of broken parts. Here is our bell housing, and you see the shift cable bellow, the exhaust bellow, and the U-joint bellow, as well as the very old dry rotted, hard, and leaking water tube. And here's the opposite end of the water tube. Again, rock solid. Not even movable or bendable. Here's the exhaust bellow that we cut, and this portion right here secures to the exhaust on the transom plate, which is right there. Here's where the shift cable connects to and the U-joint bellows above that, where you have your U-joint shaft assembly, the crossbars, as well as your gimbal bearing and oil seal. And I've got a gimbal bearing right here. Nothing fancy. And here's the opposite end of our U-joint bellow. I wanna reposition the camera and talk more about this. However, first I wanna show you some inside views. Here again is the exhaust bellow, the shift cable bellow and the water tube again very dry rotted old stiff and the u-joint bellows very greasy i've now repositioned the camera and again we're just going to basically talk about a few fundamentals of your bellows and the purpose of them as well as why you want to replace them over time some recommend maybe every two to three years and some extreme boaters out there that take extra good care of their engines do it every year however again we'll start with the water tube and this is a rubber hose that secures onto a fitting on the inner portion of the bell housing and not sure if you can see much of it in there. And this part right here is where we cut it inside the bell housing when it was connected to the boat. And this portion right here feeds all the way up to the water tube. And the water tube comes in two different options. Number one, in our case, we got a 1989 Alpha One Gen One and our water tube is white plastic. However, if you've got a different serial number or a different engine, yours may be metal. And what we recommend when purchasing a brand new water tube, if that's what you do, if you've got a plastic one, replace it with a plastic one. If you've got a metal one, replace it with a metal one. And again, this tube is extremely hard and you can't really bend it and as you can see again extremely dry rotted and when it connects to the water tube up top again the white plastic tube it's secured in place by a clamp here as you see so again that's the water tube and once it feeds through the water tube and through the transom to the internal portion of the hull it then feeds all the way up to the top of the engine into its respective fitting and scrolling above right now is a video link that we show our entire replacement of our white plastic water tube as well as the inboard hose that feeds all the way up to the top portion of the inboard engine to its respective fitting so definitely check that out. Again, that's the water tube. Now to the exhaust bellows, as you can see here, here's where we made our cut. And this portion again feeds through the exhaust pipe that is on the transom plate. And since we're here, this is a little grounding clip. And what it does is it works in conjunction with your grounded wires as well as your anode kit to alleviate corrosion to this clamp, which ultimately would cause premature failure of this clamp. In other words, to alleviate this clamp from corroding so bad that it just falls off while you're out riding around in the boat, they designed these grounding clips to go on your bellows. And again, we made our cut as we were removing this from the boat. And in addition, right here, you can kind of see a little bit of leaking and that is oil. However, over time, these bellows can actually get to this point where they can dry rot, become extremely hard, and no longer maneuverable like this. As you can see, this one's still in pretty good condition. In the event that it was much older and dry rotted and stiff, not allowing us to push it down like that, that bellow must be replaced. In addition, most boat owners will tell you when it comes time to store your boat, do not store your boat with your outdrive in the full up position or trailer position for long periods of time. For example, those that store the boat during the winter. Because if you do that, you place a constant stretch on the bellow itself. Because again, it's in the trailer or trimmed up position, which pulls this bellow or extends this bellow outward and puts a lot of stress on it during the cold season. And what could happen is if it's dry it in any way or it's an old bellow that has not been replaced in maybe five to seven years chances are you're going to come back in the spring and find a small hole maybe like that where the bellow split because of the added pressure on the bellow itself again this one's in decent condition but we're doing a full bellow replacement because other parts were leaking i'll set that aside and i'll shift the bell housing up again here is our u-joint bellow and our entire u-joint shaft slides in here and our gimbal bearing is on the inner portion way inside here goes through this opening in the gimbal bearing 
and continues its way all the way to the internal portion of your engine coupler, which is inside your engine. And that is how the inboard engine distributes the power to the outdrive gears, ultimately giving you forward, neutral, and reverse power and settings with your outdrive. And again, here is the opposite end U-joint bellow, much larger as you see here. And again, there's that clip and you should have a grounding clip on your U-joint bellow as well to alleviate corrosion and failure of those clamps. So let me show you the opposite end of the bell housing. Again, Alpha 1 Gen 1. And there's what we're looking at. You can see that white plastic shaft sticking out. That is our shift cable. However, we've cut that and we're going to install a brand new shift cable. Last but not least, our shift cable bellow. We did have to cut it for ease of removing it. And again, just a normal worm gear clamp. And this part right here goes to the back side of our housing and shaft here, which will be right inside there. So that goes inside here, and then this portion loops around the inner housing installed on the transom and is secured by the clamp to create that watertight seal to alleviate any water or moisture getting inside the shift cable area and causing harm to it. I briefly cleaned up the bench, and as far as our replacement bellows kit, comes in a big box like this, Quicksilver OEM parts, and again, repair kit for the transom or all the bellows. I'll set this down, and we will start with the water tube. DIYers, this is an extremely important part of your bellow rebuild project because the water tube itself and these hoses comes in two different sizes, three quarters inch as well as five eighths inch. And when you get the box, it comes with both a three quarters inch hose as well as a five eighths inch hose. And the way to tell which one you have on your exact engine is your service manual. However, if you don't have that, grab a tape measure and measure the inner diameter hole of your water tube and what I'll do is I will start at the one and again go outward let me give you a better view of this again I'll start at the one and you'll notice mine is three quarters inch in diameter again we are measuring the inner hole of the hose itself check that out three quarters inch in the event that you have a five eighths diameter well you'll want to install the five eighths hose set that aside and again this is the three quarters inch hose and the shape of it is much different than the 5 eighths. The 5 eighths is just a straight hose. And as you can see, 5 eighths. However, the 3 quarters does not show any 3 quarters. But as far as position, this part right here will go all the way inside this portion of the bell housing and secure to the housing with a clamp. And then this will feed all the way up to that white plastic tube that I've been talking about. So again, very important step to ensure you're putting the proper size hose on your water tube, whether it's plastic or metal, to alleviate any issues down the road when you get everything put back together. I'll set those aside. And to the exhaust bellow, as you can see here, brand new, very nice, brand new clamps, as well as grounding clips, as you can see right there. See it right there? Very important to have installed on your bellows during the stage of the repair. Because again, without those grounding clips, these clamps will corrode, rust, and just fall off. And trust me, your bellow adhesive will not be strong enough to hold this bellow onto this housing when you're out driving around in the water. And again, new versus old, the old one, there were no leaks and it was still pretty flexible. But again, due to us replacing other parts, we are going to replace the exhaust bellow. Now to the large U-joint bellow as shown here. And again, there's your grounding clip that must be there to protect the life of your clamps. The last thing you want is these clamps deteriorating and failing. So this is a big bellow. And again, here's the old one compared to the new one. There's the part number. Very, very greasy inside. And the new one will not have that grease inside. Next, our shift cable bellow. As you see here, new clamp, new bellow. And it's got a new securing clamp, which is this one right here. A little lock ring that secures this portion of the bellow to the shift cable on the inner housing. And you got a couple O-rings as well that go on the opposite end of the bell housing. Part number. Again, old, new. And your bellow adhesive, extremely important. There's the part number down below in the comment section as well as description section will be a link on where to purchase this. This is a must have when doing a bellow replacement. Again, a must have. Here it is right there, 1.5 ounce. In addition, while we're here, not only will we be installing a brand new gimbal bearing, 
but we are also going to install a brand new shift cable slide that secures to the opposite end shift cable on the bell housing as well as the removable plastic cover and rod and locking nut that is the part of the shift cable that's above the engine on the actual inboard engine so again all of this will be brand new all right DIYers we have transitioned to the garage where the boat is and here is our transom where the outdrive connects into and the bell housing and I want to show you that water tube I've been mentioning there it is right there ours is plastic and it feeds into a rubber bushing and goes to the internal portion of the hull and connects to an additional rubber hose which again feeds all the way up to the top portion of your inboard engine into its housing and I brought the three quarters inch hose out there again is the shape of it and the way this goes in here is basically it connects as shown and the hose loops around the gimbal bearing housing and feeds outward where it then connects to the bell housing fitting and again each end will be secured by those clamps I'll set that aside. I want to talk about the inner bushing here. You have a rubber bushing and DIYers, in my opinion, it is extremely important to replace that bushing during this stage of the project because in the event that you take your outdrive off, rebuild that, and then install all brand new hoses and bellows and then launch the boat and you still got a leak coming inside the hull of your boat, well, it may be that rubber fitting right there. Again, let me scroll in. You can see a rubber fitting that the water tube itself goes through. And the purpose of that fitting is to create a watertight seal at that exact spot for that water tube and transom housing as it travels through the hull of the boat and into the additional rubber hose internally. If that is dry rotted, cracked, or damaged in any way, guess what? That is going to allow water inside the hull of your boat and get you all confused. Because again, you just replaced everything that could cause a leak. However, if you forget about that one bushing, that may be your issue. And scrolling above right now is a video link where we replace that exact bushing. Now let's go inside the boat and show you what it looks like. Inside the boat now and this is a 3.0 Mercruiser inboard. We are going to go down below and show you where that water tube comes through and connects to the inner hose. In relation to the engine we are on the left hand side and we are going to come all the way inside here where we will see the hose that feeds all the way down. Let me move some things out of the way and scroll in and as you can see right there that white plastic tube that comes through the transom as well as the hull of the boat and is secured in place with two screws or bolts by its respective cover and then it feeds inside this rubber hose which is secured by this fitting here and again if you do not replace the inner bushing you may run into leaks after getting everything put back together and that would be annoying and what we will do is we will follow that hose upward as you can see here and it comes all the way to the top portion of the engine as shown here and it feeds all the way up let me scroll out a bit and goes in between the engine as well as carburetor and then feeds into the thermostat which is right there in addition to that hose going into the thermostat, you have two additional hoses, this large one on the left side and that large one on the top right. And again, that is your thermostat. And as we mentioned earlier, all of this is going to be replaced and definitely check out the link that was scrolling above. It may be helpful. Back inside to the workbench. One additional thing, if you've got a Gen 2 or a Bravo, you have an oil line that connects to the bell housing and feeds all the way up to the internal engine and to the reservoir for your gear lube. And in the event that that oil line is dry rotted or in any condition like this, chances are it's leaking oil into the water. And you can tell if your bell housing or any portion of your bellows, oil line, or transom is leaking is by taking the boat for a cruise and then stopping either at the dock or the sandbar. And in the event that in a matter of maybe five to seven minutes, you have a big gasoline looking ring in the water surrounding the rear portion of your boat, it is definitely time to service your bellows, water tube, shift cable, and that oil line. Again, if you have a Gen 2 or Bravos, because you don't want any of that getting inside the water. Number one, because it's not good. And number two, a lot of people will look at your boat and wonder what's going on and in that case it's kind of embarrassing sitting at the sandbar right so again if that's happening to you get everything replaced and down below in the comment section as well as description section we have several video links that should help you we hope to see you there from here do us a favor blow the video you'll see that thumbs up icon click on that like the video subscribe to the channel definitely ring your youtube bell that would be very helpful to us we really appreciate it thanks again for watching